Welcome, 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 welcome to another exciting episode of Carving the Divine TV. My name is Yujiro Seki. I'm a director, writer, and the producer of the documentary Carving the Divine. Carving the Divine is about the Buddhist sculptors of Japan, and I'm ready to present it for the first time in the world. But before I do so, I thought it would be a great idea to introduce basic concept of Buddhism and the history of Buddhism, so that when you guys finally watch my documentary, you guys can watch it at the maximum value. So, with that being said, I would like to introduce uh, our scholar, and this guy is a uh, freaking intelligent, and I'm really excited to have him in my show. No, in our show. So, welcome, Frederick Hewitt. Welcome. Yes, thank you, UG. I'm very excited to be back on our show. Awesome, awesome. So, Frederick, so uh, today uh, we're going to go into a new era. Uh, Kamakura. So previously, we talked about the uh, Nanto Rokushu, uh, Shugendo, and uh, also, of course, uh, uh, yeah, other two uh, important Buddhism, uh, Shingon and Tendai. So now we're going to go into new period and new schools of Buddhism. They are called uh, Kamakura School of Buddhism. Please, please, uh, Frederick, tell us about the Kamakura School of Buddhism along with uh, what Kamakura period was and why a uh, new school of Buddhism uh, showed up suddenly. I know it's uh, like a loaded question, but I think you can do it. Let's do it. Yes, thank you, Yuji. Yeah, I'd be more than happy to. So uh, Kamakura, that is the uh, medieval time period of Japan, uh, beginning at the end of the uh, 12th century through the early part of the 14th century. So think late 1100s to the early 1300s. Um, and this, this is a, a huge transition in Japanese society. Um, before that, during the Heian period, uh, that was uh, dominated by the aristocracy and the, the royal family uh, over in Kyoto in the West. Uh, as time went on, um, Japan uh, became increasingly fragmented uh, with fiefs or plots of land protected by warriors called samurai. And you had the daimyo and you had the shogun at the top level. Um, the different uh, regions began vying for power and there was a lot of uh, rivalry between them. Um, but you had the rise of the uh, Minamoto clan um, in uh, Kamakura. So they, uh, they ruled from the east of Japan uh, they held the political power, but they still recognized the imperial family in Kyoto. So the time period overall became chaotic with warfare and increasing militarization. Oh, wow. So uh, what are uh, schools of uh, uh, Buddhism that came out in that uh, time period? Yes. So uh, you had a whole um, flourishing um, time period of new schools that responded to the conditions of that time period. Uh, to kind of put it into context, um, there was um, a theory that was really popular during that time period called Mappo, which is the latter day of the law. Uh, the, um, the original Buddha, uh, Siddhartha Gautama, he, uh, he predicted that um, over a time period of several thousand years that you would have three ages of Buddhism. One, the earliest part um, being the purest form of teaching and practicing it, and increasingly through the three time periods from former to middle to latter, uh, people fall away from the true intention of the Buddha, and they fall away from the practice, and society becomes increasingly degenerate until everything falls into chaos. Um, so during this time period where you have constant warfare in Japan, a lot of um, Buddhist scholars and monks, they, they felt that this was the midst of the latter day of the law and the end was near. Uh, so you have a, a lot of um, new schools of Buddhism that sprang out to respond to um, people suffering and each person, each, each school had their own way of, of leading people to salvation. Uh, the three main schools, there, there are several that came up, but the three dominant ones, uh, you have Zen Buddhism, which is, uh, you have two major schools of, um, you have Rinzai, founded by 
uh, Eisai, and you have Soto founded by uh, Dogen. Then you also have Pure Land Buddhism. Um, you have True Pure Land School that, that was founded by Honen and Shinran, respectively. And you have uh, Nichiren um, Buddhism, which was expounded by the monk Nichiren Daishonin. And to give a general idea of the major characteristics of each school of thought, uh, the, the Zen schools, they, they practiced um, self-power, jiriki, so um, seeking enlightenment uh, through, through practice, like less reading about Buddhism and more meditating and more actually experiencing it for yourself. So they, they seek satori, which is enlightenment. Um, and you can only reach that as a part of a personal quest. Um, and you will keep working at it for many, many years. Um, pure land, uh, you have two strains, but essentially they, they design it for lay people, people that can't devote their lives to living in a monastery. Um, and they had a practice that they called nenbutsu. Nenbutsu is uh, chanting to Amitabha Buddha in Japanese, Amitabutsu. And he is the uh, celestial Buddha uh, that has infinite compassion and he dwells in the uh, Western land of uh, paradise called pure land. And people just by um, relying on outside power, Tariki, they, uh, by the sincerity of their faith chanting Amitabha's name, they can be welcomed into this pure land and be saved. And then you have uh, Nichiren Buddhism, which uh, Nichiren, he upheld the um, teachings from the Tendai sect that the Lotus Sutra is the supreme teaching, that all living beings are equally capable of attaining Buddhahood in this lifetime. And uh, he invoked uh, chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, devotion to the mystic law of cause and effect. Um, and so uh, that's just a very brief overview of those three major schools, but they were all uh, seen as a response to a dire situation where, where there was constant warfare, disease, uh, two major attempted invasions from Mongolia or by Mongol forces in China. And uh, it was a very interesting time period. But I could keep on talking, but uh, <laughs> but I think that's enough for today. And uh, no, that's a plenty, plenty of enough. So, you know, uh, sounds like uh, it was a very, very difficult time for everybody. And, uh, you know, people needed some, some salvations. And, uh, you know, Buddhism was definitely uh, the answer for uh, those people uh, during that time period. So I got it. So, yeah. So if you think uh, you, uh, this information is useful, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. Follow me on Twitter and Instagram and like me on my Facebook because that's how we do it in the 21st century. And, uh, you know, Mapo as well. So it's not 21st century, but, you know, we, we got we to gotta keep going. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Yuji. It was a great pleasure being with you today and talking about Kamakura. Awesome. See you next time. <laughs>